In today's video, I'm going to upcycle three things that you can find at any thrift store. Old signs, old frames, and Hobby Lobby artwork. Why is that? And we are going to get right into it with DIY number one and upcycle an old sign. And this sign is going to get a complete makeover. And since the sign was previously painted, I need to sand it because if I paint it without sanding, I'm always going to be able to see that design underneath my new paint job. So I took it outside and used my orbital sander. And now it's ready to paint. I used Wise Owl Synthetic Chalk Paint in the color Goldenrod. And if you have DIY paint, this is real similar to cake batter. Next, I'm gonna take this wooden container that I actually thrifted a while, even started doing a DIY on it, but never finished. And once I got it all marked, I was ready to use, this has gotta be the cutest little tool ever. You get it from Harbor Freight, and it's about $50. You can hear that the blade stopped when I push too hard, so it's not very powerful. But it is fun to have, and you can cut through like paint sticks, <laughs> you know, just little things. Next, I took this redesigned by Prima decor mold, Avian Love. I dusted it with cornstarch so the clay wouldn't stick. Now these molds don't have the micro rim like IOD molds do, but they're just as easy to use. What I do, or what works for me, and I think everyone's different, we all have our own style, is I get the clay in. So it's pretty good, I think, I'm, I, think I have all the clay in all the right spots. Then I just take my fingers and I push around the edge till I can see the edge of the mold. That way when I take the clay out of the mold, I have a little less cleanup to do. I flip the mold over, I gently pull back on the mold, and I let gravity do the rest. And by cleanup, I mean when I'm taking my little X-Acto knife and cutting off any extra little overhangs of the clay. And I use tight bond wood glue to glue the clay to the sign. You might have noticed that some of the little branches fell off, which is easy to do when you are using clay in a little tiny space, but no worry, I just glued them back on. Next, I wanna use these stamps. I think I got them off of Amazon, but they don't have a sticky back, and I really wanna use this thin mount. It makes it much easier for stamping. So I just used that, I flashed it real fast. It's called Pixie Spray, and it puts a light adhesive on it. I think this stamp came out of the same package and I needed it for this stamp too. And you can see here, the stamp pulls right off. Now this next stamp is so big, I don't even need to use the thin mount. And this just might be my new favorite stamp. I think it's so pretty. Now right here, I could be using a brayer or like someone suggested in my last video, um, a rolling pin or a bottle. I could have rolled it over the top, but I'm okay with the stamp be looking like this. It looks a little distressed. I got all my stamps down and I was ready to paint my pocket. And once I got the pocket all painted, I used tight bond wood glue to glue it to the sign. And I had purchased these encyclopedias from an estate sale for staging, but they were perfect for weighing down my pocket. I'm gonna mix together some Durham's water putty. It's great to use because you can make it as thick or as thin as you need. And I needed it pretty thick because I had a pretty big gap to fill. As you can see right here. So even after all my measuring and my lines, I still didn't cut it straight. But fortunately, it was all fixable. I just needed to sand it down and do a little touch-up paint, and it was ready for the stencil. 
I really wanted this pocket to have, or this whole sign to have a French country look, so I wanted to add this stripe to the front of the pocket. And I used the JRV grain sack stencil. I will be the first to admit that I am not very good at stenciling. I think I just try to go too fast. So I am trying to set myself up for success by using a brand new JRV stencil brush. I am loading the paint or the brush with paint and then I'm offloading the excess and I'm just taking my time pouncing. That's when you take the brush and you go up and down as opposed to using it like a paintbrush going back and forth. And then I switched to a bigger stencil brush because this needed to go way faster. But I was still being very careful, pouncing. Now, if you have any tips for me to help my stenciling, I would love to hear them. But I was very happy with the way it turned out, except when I went to lift the stencil, some of the tape removed the paint. So I just had to sand it down and repaint. And one of the nice things about using chalk paint is that you can wet distress it with the baby wipe or really any wet rag. And some of the places that the stamping was too dark, I just used my little hand sander to lighten them up. I used Annie Sloan clear wax to seal it. And then I added a little bit of the dark wax to the clear wax to give it an aged look. And this project was done. I really like how it turned out. I think it really looks French country, but I would love to know what you think. And on to DIY number two, the Hobby Lobby sign. When I saw this sign when I was out thrifting, I knew it would be the cutest makeover. And I got, I got nothing against bacon, okay? But this is gonna make a cute, a cute easy flip. And I hope that gray was the color of the day and I didn't pay $9.99 for this sign. The first thing I did was remove all the hardware because my sign is going to actually hang the other direction. I wanted to remove all the paper, get that whole back cleaned up. And the tool I'm using right here is a staple remover. And if you have weak hands, it is so nice. It works so great. Then I just took my heat gun and I removed all the paper. If you don't have a heat gun, you could easily use a blow dryer because I'm just softening up the glue. And I quickly realized that that paper was holding my sign together, which was an easy fix. I just took some wood glue and then I used hot glue to hold it together while the wood glue was drying. I painted everything white, which I really didn't need to do the center white because because it has chicken wire on the sign. I thought I'm really gonna go farmhouse, country. So this is what I did. Whenever I go to Lowe's, I always pick up a package of these long painting stir sticks. They're just easy to work with and they're inexpensive. I used my miter saw to cut these down to size. If you don't have a miter saw, I, that picture that I inserted, that's one that you can get from Lowe's for about $12. I got all my wood slats painted and they were ready to glue down on the sign. I used the same combination of wood glue and hot glue. I don't know if you can tell in this picture, but the sign still looked like it was plastic, so I decided to repaint it in Wiesel chalk synthetic, synthetic paint in Grecian clay, which I thought matched perfectly with the new JRV decoupage rice paper. And this one is called, I love the name, Cows by a River. So descriptive, you know exactly which one it is. I got to use my new ruler that gives a nice straight torn edge to the paper. 
Now for the top and the bottom of the paper, I just needed a little bit torn off. There wasn't enough paper to pick up, so I had to dampen it. Then I was then I just went along and I just like pulled off the wet paper. It was much easier to do when the paper was damp. Then I just took a dry paper towel and cleaned up the edge. After I wet the bottom, I started out using my finger, but then I ended up switching to a craft stick, which I thought worked way better to get into those little nooks and crannies of the torn edge. If you've never decoupaged before, this is a perfect beginner project. It's just straight decoupage. You just apply a little decoupage medium and then just put down the paper. I used a little cling wrap to smooth it out. Now you might not find a frame like this, but you know frames at a thrift store are a dime a dozen and you could easily just fill the inside of the frame with the wood slats. I don't show it here, but I did go over the top of the decoupage paper with the decoupage medium just to seal it in good. Now this project could be done right here before I do the dry painting. I know not everyone likes this distressed look, but I just thought it needed a little bit more. So I took a dry paintbrush. I just put a little bit of white paint on and went over the top of the frame. I removed all the tape and this is how it turned out. I really like the way this one turned out. I would love to know what you think. I just, I think it's so cute with the chicken wire. And on to DIY number three. For the next DIY, we're gonna upcycle a frame and frames that look like this are in abundance at the thrift store. I didn't even take a before picture because everybody knows what an ugly frame looks like. Now, I'm only showing you the painting here because just in case you're new to DIYing, this is what a first coat of paint looks like. It's bad, but it gets better. And this is after the second coat. And this is after the third and final coat. Next, I'm going to take this amazing casting resin, which is really fun to use. I have only done it a few times. There are two parts to it, part A and part B, and you take equal parts. Now here I'm mixing them in a solo cup because the box comes with some mixing cups, but I've already used them up. So I'm just taking the solo cup and you just add equal parts, mix it together, and the cup will start to get really warm, uh, almost hot. And then you know it's mixed up well, then you have just a few minutes to get it in the mold. So you need to have everything ready. This is speeded up, but it does take a minute to get this mixed together. You don't have to use cornstarch, you just use the mold just like it is. And underfilling the cups is way better than overfilling the cups, especially if you try to fix it after you've overfilled them which of course I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> now the resin is gonna turn white as it hardens and you can see here it's already starting to turn white. This is why I used the resin. I knew I wanted the flowers to stick up over the frame and resin dries rock hard. I don't think you can break it. It, it is, it's tough. <laughs> so the frame ever dropped, uh, yeah, the glass would break way before uh, that resin did anything. And I used tight bond glue to glue this mold to the frame. When I pulled out the swoosh, I pulled it out a little early because I wanted it soft enough so that I could have it go around the bottom, the, around the corner of the frame. But it was like gel at this point, and you know, there's no putting it back. So I just had to go with it, but it still worked out. And on the plus side, it was very easy to trim. I mix up enough resin for my second swoosh, but I just cannot leave well enough alone. And you'll see in a minute, I just needed to leave it alone. 
don't try to fix it after you've put it in the mold. And this is what I was dealing with. But fortunately, on the front of the mold, it looked perfect. If you've never used resin before, don't be discouraged. I have made other resin molds and they came out perfect. But you know what? It's good to see what not to do. So this is, this is that video. I also needed to paint the molds white. I wanted, even though they were white, I wanted them the same color as the frame. And I'm going to use the new H2O transfers by Redesign with Prima. When I first heard about them, I thought they might be similar to the IOD paint inlays. But they're not. They're just like what their name says. They are a transfer. It's just an easier way to apply a transfer. And with transfers, you get to make up your own design. So you just pick and choose which flowers you want to use. I'm also going to be using a stencil, so I thought I'd better get my stencil down and then work my design around it. To apply the transfer, you need to dampen the area where the transfer is going to go. I used an old dishcloth to do this. You want the area dampened, but you don't want the water pooling. You've probably also noticed that the, the transfers look black and white. When you flip them over, the design is on the back side in black and white, so you can see exactly where your transfer is going. Once you put the transfer where you want it, now you're going to dampen the transfer again. Once you have that top paper damp on the transfer, then you need to go over it with some type of scraping tool. You could always use an old gift card or a credit card. The instructions say to wait three minutes and then it's ready to lift that top sheet. I have to say that was pretty simple and I loved how it turned out. Now, the transfer was fine. It was down, it was perfect, but the paper around the transfer was stuck to the frame. So I just had to wet it and then it released off the frame. And I repeated that process two more times. I think I got this stencil off of Amazon if um, I, I think I and I also think I've had it a while but I'll I will try to look for it in my history and if I find it I'll put a link to this one because it's a cute one and here I go stenciling again two stencils in one video again I'm using my new JRV stencil brush and I'm just gonna take my time but I am gonna speed it up because Pretty boring to watch, so here we go. And I'm being very careful removing that tape because I don't want it to lift the paint because this paint is not fully cured yet. I don't want to use dark wax on this particular project, so I'm gonna make my own wax by just taking some clear wax and mixing it with a complementary paint color. This is Rocksteady by Wise Owl Paint. And then I'm going to use the new wax just like it's a dark wax. I want it to highlight and get in all the um, nooks and crannies of the flower and then I'm going to wipe it back so that the white comes through but that dark color is all down in the petals of the flower. This frame has a little bit of detail on it that I want to bring out, so I'm going to go all the way around the frame with the wax. And just as a reminder, here's how this frame started out. And this is what it looks like now. I love a good transformation. Have you tried the new transfers yet? I'd love to know what you think of them.
If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will try to leave links below. If I forget to leave a link, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Or if there's a question you have, just let me know. I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for subscribing to my channel for and for leaving such sweet comments. It means so much to me. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.